Yes. Hi students, welcome to my channel Dawn of Chemistry. This is your Prabhat and in today's class we are going to discuss about the acids. So the concept we are going to discuss about is acids. What is this acid? In our lower sections you got one definition that as it is a substance which is so to taste and that converts the blue litmus into red litmus is an acid. Actually that is not a proper definition. Ma. That is a definition based on the properties. If it is a so to taste you can taste HCl there is no issue. H2SO4 also you can taste and you can say whether it is acid or base. If I give you hydrogen cyanide. If I ask you if hydrogen cyanide is acid or base what you will do? If you want to taste it and taste, say the question means it's not possible because you will not be there because so that's why it is not possible to tell the definition for acid based on the taste and all so that's why to explain whether a compound is acid or base three important theories have been proposed what are the three important theories proposed to explain whether a compound is acid or base is Arrhenius theory Bronsted Lowry Acid Base Theory and one more theory is the Lewis Acid Base Theory. Now I am not going to discuss about the theories at all because in the further coming classes I will be explaining you what are these theories. Today I just want to give you a brief idea what are acids and what are bases. Bases means in the next class I will be giving you acids we will see. What is an acid? So many students are there, so many students I have come across in the initial starting of them they are very confused even to remember the formulas of the acids also. Let us say sulfuric acid means everybody will say H2SO4. Nitric acid means everybody will say HNO3. So I have to say the name and they will be telling the formulas. But in independently they should know the names of all the possible acids. So for that purpose I will be giving you some hint in the present class. Go through this thing. So by the end of the class you will come to an idea that what is an acid. How to remember the names of all the acids wholly. How many acids are possible? That also you will be able to identify. <clears throat> Let's get into the details. Basically, we can classify acids into two categories. The first category is inorganic acids and the other one is organic acids. Inorganic acids means acids which are formed by mostly combination of other elements than carbon. Organic acids means organic acids are the acids which are obtained by replacing or simply organic compounds which behave as acids. Inorganic compounds which behave as acids are inorganic acids. Always remember mostly inorganic acids will be stronger acids than that of the organic acids. You know organic chemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of hydrocarbons and their derivatives. That is nothing but the organic chemistry and the chemistry which deals with the other compounds except these organic compounds is nothing but the inorganic chemistry. Now let us see what are these inorganic acids. Basically, inorganic acids can be classified into two categories. The first one is hydracids and the second category is oxo acids. The first category of acids is hydracids. The second category of acids is oxo acids. What are these hydracids means? Acids in which
हाइड्रोजन इज अटैच टू सेंट्रल आइटम हाइड्रोजन इज अटैच टू सेंट्रल आइटम सो वट एवर द मेन आइटम इज देयर दैट इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द एसिड फॉर्मेशन टू दैट इट विल बी अटैच एग्जाम्पल यू सी एच सी एल एच बी आर एच आई सो दिस काइंड ऑफ एसिड्स आर नोन एज दाइड्रो एसिड्स ऑक्सो एसिड्स मीन्स एसिड्स इन विच हाइड्रोजन अटैच टू सेंट्रल आइटम थ्रू ऑक्सीजन एटम थ्रू ऑक्सीजन एटम लेट एस टेक हेच एन ओ थ्री एन डबल बॉन्ड वो डेटिव बॉन्ड वो ओ एच एच टू एस ओ फोर एच डबल बॉन्ड वो डबल बॉन्ड वो ओ एच एंड देन ओ एच इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दीज एसिड्स हाइड्रोजन अटैच टू द सेंट्रल आइटम थ्रू दी ऑक्सीजन आइटम बट इन द हाइड्रो एसिड्स डायरेक्टली हाइड्रोजन इज अटैच टू द सेंट्रल आइटम और मेन आइटम सो एसिड्स इन विच हाइड्रोजन इज अटैच टू द मेन आइटम और सेंट्रल आइटम डायरेक्टली आर नोन एज द हाइड्रो एसिड्स एसिड्स इन विच हाइड्रोजन इज अटैच टू द सेंट्रल आइटम थ्रू दी ऑक्सीजन आइटम आर नोन एज द ऑक्सो एसिड्स एंड ऑर्गेनिक एसिड्स आर based on the functional group they will be behaving as these acids what are these organic acids means carboxylic acids carboxylic acids phenols phenols are the compounds which will be having the oh group on the benzene ring and alcohols alkynes so these are the major compounds which will be behaving as the organic acids so basically acids to explain whether a compound is acid or base there are three theories independently by using one theory you cannot decide whether a compound is acid or base up to 100% extract or you cannot classify all the possible available compounds based on one theory you need collection of three theories to decide whether a all the whether a particular compound is acid or base clear so to cover maximum topics you should understand these three theories let us see for example h2o whether h2o is acid or base means generally according to the lower standard definition you will say it is neither sour to taste nor bitter to taste so that's why how to classify whether water is acid or base so to explain the acidic nature of the water you have to go for bronsted lowry acid base theory according to bronsted lowry acid base theory it can donate a proton so it is acid it can take a proton so it will be a base and hence it will be amphoteric in nature what about the nature of h plus ion to explain the nature of h plus ion arrhenius theory fails to explain its acidic nature bronsted lowry theory also cannot explain the acidic nature but lewis theory explains the acidic nature that's why <clears throat> to understand maximum available compounds acidity acidic nature and then basic nature to understand you should know the three theories some compounds can be explained by using this theory some compounds can be explained by using this theory all the compounds cannot be explained alone by a single theory cannot be explained by alone a single theory okay that is the next thing. so see inorganic acids and organic acids inorganic acids we are having hydro acids and then oxo acids let us see strength of acids so in this strength of acids what i am going to discuss is so see in this strength of acids what i am going to discuss is what are the hydro acids how to identify the hydro acids see hydro acids can be identified group wise 
let us take halogens you know very well what are the halogens if you don't know means i will be making a next video how to remember all the periodic table elements in some simple simple techniques i will tell you i will make a video and i will post that also for now let me go through this thing so for halogens what are the hydroxyls you know halogens are fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and then acetate so that's why the halogens we are having with the fluorine it forms hf with chlorine hcl bromine hbr and iodine hi will come with oxygen family with oxygen family the elements of oxygen family are oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium will come polonium is there that is radioactive element that's why we will not much consider about that thing so see oxygen with oxygen h2o h2o is not an oxo acid it is a hydro acid itself h2o h2s h2se h2t that is with oxygen family let's come to nitrogen family in the nitrogen family ammonia phosphine the nitrogen family elements are nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth will come so that's why nitrogen ammonia phosphine arsine still being and bismuth you may ask a question sir ammonia is base you are considering it as an acid as i told you every compound alone not behaves as completely base every compound alone not behaves as acid that depends on to with which compound it is reacting if it is reacting with a weaker acid than this particular one means then it behaves as an acid and the weaker one behaves as a base because strong acid donates proton to this one when this is reacting with another strong acid in this strong acid it will donate proton to this one so that's why the existing one will behave as a base let me clarify this statement if you take for example uh, what i will take uh, i will take example of uh, uh, hf i will take when hf is reacting with water hf is a strong acid than water so it will donate proton to h2o so this is acid and this will behave as a base but whenever hf is reacting with h2so4 whenever hf is reacting with h2so4 h2so4 is a strong acid and it will donate proton to the hf that's why h2so4 behaves as acid and this behaves as a base so don't stick to a statement that always an acid will behave as an acid only so based on with which compound it is reacting its nature also will be changing right so that's why nitrogen family elements are these things and let's come to carbon family elements the carbon family methane carbon silicon germanium tin lead will come so like this you can have the different compounds and before carbon we are having the boron family up before boron family what will be present means <clears throat> yes boron family in boron family they will form the hydrides in nature man in boron family we will be having only b2 h6 or bh3 and other compounds will be metallic in nature they will produce the hydrides so that will not be coming under the category of acids that is a different scenario that comes under the category of salts so these are the hydroxyls what we can how maximum hydroxyls we can have in the available compound sir how to identify which is a strong acid and which is weak acid always remember in these things hf hcl hbr hi any substance if it is having greater capacity of donation of proton it is a strong acid if you see which bond is weak bond means stronger the bond means weak bond so that's why in the periods on moving from top to bottom the bond length increases since the bond length increases 
बॉन्ड लेंथ इंक्रीजेस बॉन्ड एनर्जी डिक्रीजेस बॉन्ड लेंथ इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू बॉन्ड एनर्जी सिंस बॉन्ड एनर्जी इज मिनिमम यू कैन ब्रेक द बॉन्ड वेरी इजीली एंड इट कैन डोनेट प्रोटॉन वेरी इजीली सिंस बॉन्ड एनर्जी इज मिनिमम फॉर दिस थिंग इट कैन डोनेट प्रोटॉन वेरी इजीली एंड हेंस इट विल बी ए स्ट्रांग एसिड सो दैट्स व्हाई व्हिच इज अ स्ट्रांग एसिड मींस HF less than HCl less than HBr less than HI will come. Next for oxygen family it is H2O less than H2S less than H2Te less H2SE less than H2Te. In this case, ammonia less than phosphine less than arsine less than stilbene less than. Bismuthine will come here. Lead will not be forming much about the acids, ma. So you can remove that thing. CH four less than SiH four less than GH four less than SnH four. Like this, whatever the hydroxyl lead them give, you can easily identify the strength of them. <coughs> so I'm wrong. HF, H2O, NH3 and CH4, which is more acidic in nature, means in that case we will go for electronegativity. If you take HF, H2O, NH3, CH4, the basic <coughs> idea to us, the basic thing required to behave as an acid is proton donation. Here, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, which is more electronegative, means fluorine is more electronegative. Since fluorine is more electronegative, it can take proton very easily from this, and it will donate proton very easily. So it takes lone pair of electrons from the in HF. Since it is more electronegative, it can take the lone pair of electrons from the it and gives proton very easily. <coughs> So, since it can donate proton very easily here, acidic nature is directly proportional to electronegativity of a central atom. So, here the acidic nature is directly proportional to electronegativity of central atom, and hence HF greater than H2O greater than. And it's three greater than C H four. Like this, we can understand the acidic nature of hydroxyls. So, what are hydroxyls? Means acids in which hydrogen is attached to the central atom are known as the hydroxyls. These hydroxyls we can have halogens will have, oxygen will have, nitrogen will have, and then carbon will have. And how to identify the strength of these hydroxyls? <coughs> Take down this for one minute, and after this thing, I'll be explaining you what are the different oxo acids, how to identify the oxo acids, and what will be the strength of the oxo acids. We will be discussing. Okay, right. Now let us see what are these oxo acids. How to identify these oxo acids? What is the strength of the respective oxo acids? So you know very well the definition of these things. Acids in which central atom is attached to the hydrogen through the oxygen atom are known as the oxo acids. With carbon family, the oxo acids we are having is 
H2CO3, C double bond O, OH and then OH. Boron, we are having H3BO3, B, OH, OH and then OH. Next, in the boron family this one, with carbon family this one. <coughs> With silicon also you are having Si, OH, 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 OH and then OH, that is with carbon family. Let's come to nitrogen family, we are having HNO3, HNO2, N double bond O, dative bond O, OH, N double bond O, OH. With phosphorus, we are having N number of oxo acids of phosphorus are there. The important ones are H3PO4, H3PO3, H3PO2. P double bond O, OH, OH and OH. P double bond O, OH, OH and H, P double bond O, OH, H and H will come. And besides these three, there are so many other oxo acids are there, like pyrophosphorus acid, peroxyphosphorus acid, pyrophosphoric acid, peroxyphosphoric acid and all is present. That is with phosphorus. Arsenic will be having H3, ASO4. H3ASO3 Arsenic acid and then arsenous acid is present that is with phosphorus and arsenic next coming to the oxygen family in the oxygen family sulfur is having oxo acids sulfur is having H2SO4 H2SO3 S double bond O double bond O OH and then OH S double bond O OH and then OH that is with sulfur and halogens are also having the oxo acids of halogens that is HXO, HXO2, HXO3, HXO4 what is this HXO, HXO2, HXO3 and HXO4 is HClO with chlorine, HClO2, HClO3, HClO4, Cl double bond O, double bond O, double bond O, OH, Cl double bond O, double bond O, OH, Cl double bond O, OH, Cl OH. So these are the oxo acids we can have max to maximum. These are the maximum oxo acids. Even phosphorus will be having some 5 oxo acids are there, and sulfur also will be having some extra oxo acids. They are multiple oxo acids, and these things I will make a different video for phosphorus, oxo acids of phosphorus, and oxo acids of sulfur. And see in these oxo acids, how to identify the strength of acid. Always I told you. Acidic nature is directly proportional to electronegativity of a central atom. Acidic nature is directly proportional to electronegativity of central atom and electronegativity is directly proportional to oxidation state of a central atom. Oxidation, electronegativity is directly proportional to the oxidation state of central atom. Here you take chlorine will be present in the plus 1 oxidation state, in this plus 3 oxidation state, in this plus 5 oxidation state and this plus 7. If you take this as A, B, C, D. The acidic nature for these compounds is D greater than, C greater than, B greater than, A will come. And for H2SO4, you see this is in plus 6 oxidation state, this is in plus 4 oxidation state. Among these two, if you take this as A and this as B, 
always A is more acidic than B. If you take sulfuric acid and then perchloric acid which is more acidic means perchloric acid will be more acidic in nature. Like this we can have idea on the oxo acids. So what are oxo acids means acids in which hydrogen is attached to the central atom through the oxygen atom are called as the oxo acids and these are the oxo acids. So see always in all the oxo acids the central atom will be present in the possible oxidation states of the element. Halogens can have plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7 also with all its possible oxidation state it will be present. And based on the basicities and based on this sulfur oxides, tomorrow I will make a video and tomorrow in the next video I will be creating that video based on the oxides of phosphorus and oxides of sulfur. So that is the thing regarding the acids that is inorganic acids. What are the inorganic acids we are having means hydracids are there and then oxoacids are present. This is the elementary things about these acids and if you keep on discussing means you can discuss n number of things based on these acids. Clear? So I hope you understood this concept and, and in the next video we will be meeting. Thank you.